who are our special guests today. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. We are moving right along in the season, are we not? We prepare our hearts for Christmas as we gather in Jesus' name today. Today we'll be lighting two uh, candles on our Advent wreath as we pray for peace in our lives and in the world that God loves. I invite everyone to find the little red book that is along the center aisle in every pew and write your name on it, pass it down to those in the pew with you, maybe get to know their names. Um, we especially invite those who are new to us to put your email address clearly so that we can send you a special message of welcome. While you're doing that, I invite you to take a moment to greet each other so I can say a special welcome to our friends who are online. So hello to you all. Good morning and welcome online friends. It is a joy to be together with you. Take a moment to say hi to each other in the chat. That's a great way to, to know who's there. And take a look at all the links that you'll find in the comments section, the order of worship, a link to online giving, etc. cetera. Um, what a joy to be here and to know God's love as we gather. Friends, in this time of worship, let's imagine and even perceive a world where love and faithfulness meet, where peace and justice and righteousness dance together in the light of God's love. As people longed for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace, yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, just peace. Learn for peace. We light these candles as signs of God's surprising hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. You may stand as we join in singing the opening hymn, Blessed be the God of Israel, number 209 in the Red Hymnal.
gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are our people of pride against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the Lord as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. God will feed you with goodness and grace. God will give you what is good, mercy and forgiveness, love and acceptance, an eternity of justice and peace. Please be seated. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to play a game. I know everyone likes to start out church with a game, huh? I'm going to play music, and you have to tell me, shout it out loud. You don't have to raise your hand. Shout it out loud what it's music from, okay? You ready? Bluey? Okay, now here's the next one. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, with this one. It's a little on the nose, you know. It's, it kind of comes out and says it. Okay, how about this one? Joy Story, good. Oh, that's a popular one. Okay, this one might be for some of the older kids. You ready? Oh, it's so obvious, right? Now, this one's for some of our big kids in the audience. Ready? <laughs> I had it thrown out there. Okay. So, it was a, a show that people of a different generation loved. Okay. So, these are all really popular TV shows and movies, right? Now, what's something that they have in common? This is kind of hard, but I'm going to give you a hint. There's more than one. It's a series. So there's not just one episode of Bluey. There's probably a million. I don't know. How many Star Wars movies are there? Depends on who you ask, right? There's a lot of Star Wars movies. And Daniel Tiger, I know that there's more than one episode, right? There's so many. I, like, but here's, the, here's my question. Do you have to watch every single episode of Bluey to understand Bluey? No, you can watch one in the middle, one in the beginning. Star Wars, you could watch them almost in any order. I know that's controversial, but you could. You can watch them out of order because each one stands alone as an episode, but it's part of a way bigger story. And by itself, it's cool and it's interesting, but the bigger story is even better. If you watch the entire series of Bluey, then you know exactly what happens and you have all these backstories and extra stuff that's going on. That's actually what's happening in the Bible. So today, the scripture talks about something that happened in the Old Testament where the prophets were talking about, essentially, the Lord coming. 
they already talk about Jesus coming, even though this is way, way, way before Jesus actually came. And there are so many times throughout the story of the Bible where they talk about the future and about the Messiah who's going to save them that's going to happen later. And it's the same thing with the episodes of our TV shows or the movies that we like, where you can read Isaiah and really enjoy it and learn a lot from it. But it's even better if you know the entire story. And that's what makes the Bible so cool, is it's one big story filled with little small TV shows that happen throughout, that pull it all together. So we're going to say a prayer. Want to bow your heads and repeat after me, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus and all that you told us as he was coming. Help us to prepare for the season of Christmas by remembering the big story. Amen. All right, you guys can go to Children's Church that way, and you'll come back for communion. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, oh, oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough peace in the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, their consistency like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift up, do not lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will guide the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead them, or gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A pared down Christmas. That's how Reuters describes what will be happening in Bethlehem this year in the wake of the Gaza war. This week, we've heard about the decision made by the leaders of all the major Christian traditions living in Bethlehem, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, and Armenian. Together, they decided that this was not a year for beautiful Christmas lights to adorn the streets and buildings of Bethlehem. There would be no tree in Nativity Square in light of the sobering number of deaths across the Holy Land since October 7th. And Christmas will be a solemn day, full of remembrance for countless lives lost. The Advent candle that we have lit today is a candle for peace, God's deep and abiding peace. The candle only amplifies our yearning for peace, that peace of Christ to rest upon us and on our weary world. Here in our sanctuary a few weeks ago, we heard the beautiful words sung by a tenor soloist at the beginning of our annual singing of Handel's Messiah, our Messiah sing. The tenor stood at the lectern and sang, comfort, comfort ye my people, saith your God. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for God. 
the words and the expressiveness of the song reached us with such power that evening. In a world like ours, we need the comfort of our God. We need that call to prepare in our hearts, in the wilderness of this season, to prepare a highway for our God. The words were written long ago, toward the end of the sixth century of the Common Era. Earlier that century, Babylon had invaded Judah, had reduced much of Jerusalem to rubble, had interrupted the economy, and deported the leading citizens to Babylon. They occupied the land there for 50 years. And so the exquisite poetry of this anonymous prophet known as Second Isaiah, who wrote the chapters in the middle, chapters 40 through 55 of Isaiah, this gorgeous poetry emerges in the days after the invasion. It serves as a healing, life-creating, renewing song in the midst of a yearning people. The song seeks to bring back to life a people who have been crushed under a shroud of death. The author probably writes from living among the people, living with them in the difficult circumstances of their captivity, but imagining them as a nation restored, a city rebuilt, a people reunited in Zion. Other writers of the day, other prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel were still stuck on all that language of blame. You brought this on yourselves, they say. You are living in exile because you sinned against God. But second Isaiah puts the blaming and accusing aside and turns instead to poetry. Isn't that what we do in the places of our deepest need and yearning? Somehow prose just doesn't cut it anymore. And so we turn to poetry, as Isaiah did, to express comfort and hope and joy. His writings become solid ground under the people's feet, a ground they needed amidst the rubble of their world. The the damage done to the people. This distraught people can stand, not on the ruins of the destroyed temple or the monarchy collapsed, but they can stand instead on God's never failing word. Christmas is kind of hard for us in some ways this year, isn't it? It's a fierce, hard season in the life of our world. We tremble at the daily news of lives lost, not just in the Holy Land. We grieve along with those who grieve around the world. And each of us has our own places of yearning within our own hearts, our own story of needing God's comfort today. We can do Christmas. We can always do Christmas. In Bethlehem, they will still be doing Christmas, just not with festivity. When we ponder the news, the culture, maybe our own anxieties, the griefs we struggle to hide, or maybe strained relationships, we shudder. James Howell says, God seems as far away as the North Pole. Jesus feels very once upon a time in times like these. The great carols of Christmas in all their nostalgia can only carry us so far. When we grieve, it all feels a little different. 
It's appropriate for Advent to come at the darkest time of the year. In this season of candlelight and prayer, God doesn't ask us to pretend that it's not dark or that we're not confronted these days by the ugliest kinds of human behavior at work in our world. It is appropriate that our Advent carols are sometimes not buoyant and sunny. There's a mix of Advent carols. The scriptures of the season embrace both the darkness and the light, the sorrow and the joy. They're realistic. Advent, as it said, perches on the border between light and darkness, shining and shadow. Yeah, this is a good time of year for Advent to come along. We find in ourselves a yearning in this season. We hear the words of blessing and grace in our songs that are sung, and yet we know that human living is tender and not always filled with buoyant and sunny light. And so it's even more important to gather together in times like these because we do stand on solid ground. The ground of our faith in a God who is with us. That's the whole message of Christmas, that God is never gone from us as far as away as the North Pole. God is always here in our midst, hearing our yearnings, helping us to prepare a straight path for God's coming. And so today we celebrate God's voice of peace. As it reached the people of Israel lost in exile so long ago, and as it reaches us Today, as we heard it in this sanctuary during the Messiah sing, as we heard it today, as the words of the prophet were read in our midst, comfort ye, my people, saith your God, cry to her that her warfare is ended, her iniquity is pardoned, prepare in a desert, in the wilderness, a highway for God. It's a voice of peace passed down from the generations and present in our midst today as we gather at a table of peace and know the presence of the risen Christ. Remember, even in Advent, every single Sunday is a little celebration of Easter, of the resurrection power of God here in our midst. So the voice of peace is here among us today. And it calls us to prepare. We might say it calls us to find our own voice. Because this message of comfort from God isn't just met, meant for us in our own concerns and yearnings and needs. We know from the whole of the biblical witness that it is meant profoundly for those who struggle with oppression, those who are pushed to the margins of our life as a people, those whose voice is so seldom heard. The voice of peace is given to us. The comfort of God is given as something we can stand on so that we can use our voices as the voice of peace in our world. The God of great might and glory is also the God who gathers us as lambs, who speaks tenderly to Jerusalem and cries to her, that her warfare is accomplished. These words of hope and yearning for God's people are on our lips. And they're in our hearts as we prepare them, as we make them ready, not just by decorating our houses and our sanctuary, 
but by looking around the world in all its need and seeing our place within it, each of us uniquely in our own place and communally together, our place in the world. We have good news this week. We have good news of all the Christmas trees being off the lot, all but the last, amen. All but the last 13 of the trees were sold, and those last 13, actually, let me get my piece of paper. Just a minute, I forgot to bring it over here. I have Emily and um, Sally's note that I wanted to insert here. We started with 300, we're down to 287, and the last 13 are headed to the wonderful mission church, Rising Hope Mission Church, a United Methodist congregation in Mount Vernon. They had run out of trees in their sale, and we were very happy to pass these on to them. And we haven't tallied the profits, but have reached an all-time high donation, at least, of 16,000 or above. And they, uh, Sally and, and Emily said, we worried, we fretted, we stood in the rain, we got tree needles in our hair, all to help our neighbors at New Hope, and God provided. We're tired and we're overjoyed. Okay, that's a weird little blip in a sermon, right? An announcement stuck in. But it's an announcement of how we're preparing in our hearts a highway for our God. Make straight in the desert, in the, the, the wilderness of our lives, make straight together a highway for our God. We can be the voice of peace in the world around us. And so in, in that one way and in countless other ways as we gather as God's people all through the year, we are about using our voice, a voice that calls us not just to quiet peace, soundlessness, silence, calm, that blessing of a cup of tea by the fireside, but calls us to the peace also of action, to change the world for good, to change the world for God. We gather, and God calls us to be a people of peace, to be a people who never lose touch with God's song of comfort and hope and peace, even in the darkest times. We sing a song filled with lyrical poetry that reaches into the deepest places of our yearning hearts and the yearnings of this world. And we find ourselves in our place in the world, often closer to the role of bearers of the good tidings than just being hearers. There are those who need to hear the news of God's comfort even more than we do in this world. A bold declaration is offered to us about the character of God in the midst of a demoralized people. We stand on our faith in God's character. And so we are bearers of the light, of love and of peace in the world around us. We stand on solid ground, not on a destroyed temple, not in the rubble of the people's lives, but on the solid ground of the God who is with us. Pastor and Professor James Howell tells of a quote that has had seismic impact on him. It's from Mother Maria Skobsova. Anybody heard of her? I had not heard of her until this week. She's now called Saint Maria of Paris, an Orthodox nun born in Latvia, spent many years living in Russia in the early uh, 1900s. She was a poet and an intellectual. She lived in many places, but she was known for rescuing Jewish children in Paris during the Nazi occupation. 
Her convent was a rented house, and in it she welcomed refugees and others in need, and she would provide baptismal certificates for Jews who came seeking aid in very desperate times. She provided shelter and helped many escape, but the Gestapo eventually arrested her and her companions in the work, and on Holy Saturday in 1945, she was executed at Ravensbrook Prison, and she is now a saint in the Orthodox Church. Earlier in her ministry, Mother Maria said, it would be a great lie to tell those who are searching, go to church because there you'll find peace. The opposite is true. The church tells those who are at peace and asleep, go to church because there you will find real anguish for your sin and the world's sin. There you will feel an insatiable hunger for Christ's truth. There, instead of becoming lukewarm, you'll be set on fire. Instead of being pacified, you'll become alarmed. Instead of learning the wisdom of this world, you will become fools for Christ. Amen. We come yearning for peace, but it's not just the peace of a comfortable, quiet fireside. It's not just a peace of the absence of war. It's a peace that makes in the desert a highway for our God, right in our hearts and in our lives of action for God. There's, these are words not just to savor, like food at a holiday feast. We are those who savor them as bearers, not just hearers of the word. Get thee up to a high mountain, God says, to be a voice in the wilderness. So in this Advent season, we listen to that one whose voice cries out. And together, let's commit ourselves anew to make in the desert a highway for our God. May God's peace be with you. Amen. How things will change on the day of the coming of the Lord. Every valley will be lifted up and all the mountains will be made into a plain. Equality will exist for all God's people. Let's pray to God as we long for that day of hope and peace. O oh God, we strain our ears to hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness of our lives, the wilderness of despair and discouragement, the wilderness of anger and fear, the wilderness of alienation and selfishness. The voice cries to us to make ready the pathway for you, to remove the obstacles which we have placed there, to respond with acts of compassion rather than react in violent ways. Lord, attune our ears to hear the voices of those who cry out in their need. Open our hearts to respond in caring ways. Teach us again the great truths about how we should live as your children and empower us to be the faith-filled people you would have us be. As we cry to you, offering the names of loved ones who are sick, who mourn, who are lost, who live in anguish and in anger. Keep us mindful of the ways in which we can be of help. Likewise, as we rejoice with all those who are happy, who dance with delight at the wondrous gifts you have given. Remind us that joy and peace is what we all seek and what we can accomplish. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we offer this prayer. Amen. In gratitude for all that God has given us, we take a moment in our worship service to offer back to God a portion of our financial blessings. As we do so, we pledge these gifts and our lives to God's service. For those of us gathering in person, there are baskets by the doors 
and also one that will be in front of the communion table where you can place your offering. For those who would rather give electronically or for our friends worshiping online, there's a QR code in your bulletin as well as an avenue for giving on our website. Let us pray. Lord, we bring these gifts to you, thankful for all the ways you have healed and enriched our lives. May these financial gifts be used in service to others. In Jesus' name, amen. We now invite you to consider ways to extend God's grace in our midst into your lives as we go forth into the world. Certainly coming downstairs today for coffee hour is not just a time for fellowship, but this week we have a special mission event also happening as we take the food that has been brought in today for New Hope Housing and uh, place it in baskets that will be given to families who have need for food in the holiday season. This week, you're also invited to be a voice of peace in the lives of others around you as you welcome neighbors, friends, co-workers to join you on Wednesday night here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. for our first Blue Christmas service, a service that is acknowledging that Christmas isn't a joyous, buoyant time for everybody every year. And so for those who um, need a, a less uh, festive celebration of Christmas, this is a wonderful time to come together and still hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So Blue Christmas, there's more about it in your order of worship or in your um, announcements, and we invite you to um, share that experience with others as you come. Let us now rejoice and turn our hearts in song to God as we turn to the song sheet and join in singing our closing hymn.
go forth in God's peace to love and serve the world God loves. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and may the peace of Christ be upon you, and the voice of Christ comes, come from you in peace. Amen.